I'm very happy to be here with everybody today um, to sort of celebrate and to acknowledge all that we have achieved as women while also, of course, being mindful of the many ongoing struggles that we are still fighting for rights and equality across all spheres, political, economic, social, cultural, um, here in the U.S. and around the world. I think it's really important, especially at times like this, that we come together, that we take strength from each other, that we remember to work in solidarity with each other. Um, at the same time, I wanted to admit that I was really reluctant to speak here. Today, my arm had to be uh, twisted. I really felt that I didn't have that much to say or to contribute, and I sort of asked, why me? And then I realized, of course, that this is part of the problem, that if a student had come to me and said this, I would have said to her, your voice matters, your contributions are important, why not you? So I'm trying to take my own good advice um, and in the spirit of why not me, share a few very modest ideas. So I think we all probably know and feel the many ways that women are under attack. And we know that many in this circle are comparatively privileged, um, that there are other women who are suffering or who are especially vulnerable, women of color, low-income women, immigrant women. Um, we know that women's rights are being curtailed, whether that's with respect to um, women's rights over their own bodies, whether that's with respect to women in leadership positions, and we know that that's a problem in our own realm, whether we define our own realm as higher education or legal education or the human rights movement or the legal profession. Emily pointed out to me uh, that the World Economic Forum predicts that the gender gap, if you look at health, education, economic, and political power, is not estimated to close until 2186, which I found shocking and totally appalling. Um, so the theme for this year's International <coughs> Women's Day is be bold for change, the idea being everybody should kind of step up and take action. And this led me to try to reflect on the ways that I try to be bold in my own life. Um, sometimes I think I'm trying to be bold through the choices I make about the issues I work on or the way I try to be a good colleague or a good mentor. I try to be bold at home as well, making sure that my husband and I are really co-parenting and that my son and my daughter both understand that they're valued in the same ways for the same reasons, that they get to make the same choices in their lives and have the same opportunities. Um, but I think there are ways that we can all be bolder, and with that in mind, I wanted to share a little anecdote about what I'm going to do to try to be bolder um, in honor of today, hoping that that might encourage others. So I was at a meeting um, earlier this week with a handful of important people who will remain nameless, important people at the law school, um, and I was reminded in that meeting of the ways that being a woman can be so challenging. Um, men in the room talking past me, talking over me, talking to each other, airing an idea only to have someone else in the room say basically the same idea and suddenly it is heard and acknowledged, things we are probably all really familiar with. Um, but in the context of that meeting, it came out that next year apparently all of the faculty section leaders for 1Ls will be men. I didn't know this. I was pretty shocked and appalled, but I didn't say I was shocked and appalled, although I did make a very disapproving face. <laughs> yes, um, because one of the men responded, well, at least the seven of them won't all appear together. Maybe no one will notice. <laughs> and I let it go. And that was totally, totally wrong. We can't be silent and let those moments pass us by if we expect there to be change. So tonight, after I teach, and after I put my kids to bed, I'm going to send an email to the people who were in that meeting and let them know how and why I find it to be totally problematic that in 2016, 2017, HLS can't do better and make sure that there are a few women who are the faculty leaders of the section. Monday and I didn't say something and I should have. Um, so 
I'm gonna stop talking soon, but in thinking about that, it reminded me of something that I heard Elizabeth Warren say a couple of years ago. She said, if you don't have a seat at the table, you're probably on the menu. Um, and, you know, I was lucky enough to have a seat at that table, and I still let myself and people who I really care about be on the menu. A lot of us here have a lot of seats at a lot of tables, so I hope that everybody will use your power and your intelligence and your strength to be brave and to be bold. Thank you.